Welcome back, everyone, and I hope you're all doing well. In this week's episode, we're going to be taking a deep dive into compositions with moving elements. This is going to be a little bit different than my normal video, though. So instead of grabbing some popcorn for this episode, maybe grab a pen and paper and hopefully enjoy this slower, more methodical look into what exactly I'm thinking about when I'm trying to find an image. Many times when I'm looking for images, there's something happening in the image that I really want to photograph. This is kind of the definition of photography, if it's not obvious. But what sets a landscape photographer apart from someone just walking by and snapping an image is how they present what is happening to the viewer with context. Some might call this telling a story. So when I walked up to this image, there are a few things that immediately stuck out to me that felt unique that I wanted to photograph. The first one being this fog in the distance. The next being how blue the water appears in this warm summer light. And the last main element being this bit of light illuminating the scene that felt somewhat rare here in my time in Acadia, since all I've really experienced so far is fog and overcast. A little side note is I've been in Acadia for over 10 days, and this was the only day that I've had light so far. Okay, so I know what elements that I want, and now the puzzle is to put them together. Ideally, my foreground element would be something interesting that shows the light and waves while leading my viewer's eye back into the distance to that foggy hillside. This is where seascapes can be a bit difficult and something that I've talked about in my past videos regarding seascape compositions. Finding wave patterns that help you create your composition is a skill that just takes practice and patience. This evening, I found a cascade of rocks, almost resembling what looked like Legos to me, that not only were catching a bit of warm light, but were also shaped by a layer of waves that with the right wave led my viewer's eye right to that hillside. So I got the camera and tripod out and I started looking for strong compositions, but note how I'm not using my tripod yet because I don't want to set anything up until I know the shot that I want to take. The tricky part about mini seascape images is that you typically want to be really close to the waves to fill the bottom part of your frame, but you also don't want to put yourself in any danger. You can actually see here how close I'm getting to the waves and I end up backing off a bit a little bit later because I'm a little concerned about a large wave compromising my position. My first shots were landscape orientation and we have everything we want in the image. That foggy hill that now ironically doesn't have any fog on it, the warm light and those blue waves creating a nice diagonal line through my image. We even get a small bonus of this middle ground element with the cliff face here being touched by that light. My issue with this composition is that there's a lot of dead space in the top left of the frame. I keep trying this shot and even move to a higher vantage point when I felt the waves were getting a bit too close for comfort like I mentioned before. And while I was able to find some nice lines in the waves from this vantage point, it exacerbated that area of dead space. And one way to remove a lot of that dead space is to fill up more of the frame with the foreground waves. Thus, I went back down closer to the waves and tried a few portrait-oriented compositions. By switching to a portrait orientation, it eliminates a lot of that empty space and also gives the chance for the waves to create a perfect guiding line through the image like this one. Wonderful. This was everything that I wanted. I've eliminated much of that dead space, we have a nice leading line through the composition, and all of our important elements are still in the image. Yet, this isn't the image I'm going to present to you, and instead, it's one of the first images I took. Here it is. Now, you might be asking yourself, Alex, why did you just show me all of these compositional ideas when you ended up throwing them out the window anyways? The lesson here for me is that I was very focused on trying to find waves that created a perfectly timed line through my images that I didn't properly recognize how unique this little cascading rock face was right in front of me. So when I got back to review my images, I actually ended up preferring the earlier snaps that mixed both the waves and the rock face to combine into my leading line of the image. The rocks also give me more of a sense of place, specifically Acadia, whereas by hiding them in a wave, the image feels a little bit more generic. On top of that, right when I arrived, likely had the best light as the fog rolled off and I lost the light on the water and rock faces pretty quickly. And as we all know in landscape photography, lighting trumps all. So while compositionally this is far from perfect, it's a nice reminder to keep your eyes and mind open to what's right in front of you. I also keep getting reminded here in Acadia that the light might be the best far before sunset and that I should try to utilize it as productively as possible. So as the sun went behind the mountain, I lost all of the light on that eastern facing coastline, 
so I drove down to where I know the sun would still be shining for our final composition of the evening. Hey, pardon the option, spoiler alert, I do end up having another day with some sun, so stay tuned for that. It'll probably come out in some episode. But I just wanted to say thank you for all the support. I cannot do this without you. These videos take a lot of time and effort to make. Without your support, I can't keep making them. So if you wanted to help support me in more ways than just liking or subscribing to this channel, you can do that with the little link down below where you can find things like my Patreon. My Patreon is an absolutely great way to help support me. You can get a postcard once a month for yourself. I'm even gonna start to do, I'm gonna try to do one editing video a month that has commentary. So if you're trying to learn editing or you wanna see how I edit my images, I'm gonna try to do one video a month there on my Patreon for that. Or you can get credit at the end of some of these videos just for helping support me. It means the world, it really helps. And if some, that's not something you can do, but you are interested in editing, there's also a link to my Lightroom Editing Companion, which will help you learn a linear fashion to editing uh, that I think is really unique. Anyways, lots of stuff down there. I really appreciate it. Let's get back to the video and I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. <laughs> this time my shot started out a little bit differently because I had been to this spot a few times before. However, the tide was much higher than normal, which completely changes my knowledge of the spot. That's the beauty of the coastline is that there's always changing elements. So I sat my bag down and I just looked around for interesting things that stuck out to me. One of the first things I noticed was this formation of rocks created a small waterfall during the ebb and flow of the tide. So I immediately took a few test shots and I grabbed my tripod. The results were terrible, <laughs> but not to worry. It was only terrible because the light was still way too harsh. However, our composition was exactly the type of image I wanted to capture. We have a really interesting foreground element that will be the focus of the image in this waterfall. Our midground is this little cove behind it that also has some interesting wave elements within it. And to top it all off, we even get a bit of trees and mountains, which I really felt like represented Acadia in the background. Now all we had to do was wait for the right light. But in the meantime, I looked for other images that had interesting elements in them, but my mind was mostly set on the image that I had just found. The difficulty in this image was that I couldn't get the composition I wanted with a tripod. I needed to be as low as I possibly could get to capture the waterfall elements proportionately with the background without cutting out too much of the sky, even shooting at 16 millimeters. If I took this any higher up, not only will the waterfall start to appear smaller, the entire middle ground would lose its depth and the image would look a lot more flat. Thus, you can see me resting my arms on the rock face here so that I can shoot at one fifth of a shutter speed so I can get some nice flow of water in my image. Another compromise for this shot was timing. This scene only existed because the tide would come in strong enough to create this waterfall and recede fast enough for that water to have a place to fall. And as the sun set, the tide changed and ultimately the best time for the light that also created this crisp sun star, no waves were large enough to create the waterfall. And without the waterfall, the image simply doesn't work at all. I'm gonna speed up this clip that you're watching. Notice the swell was never strong enough to recreate the conditions of our waterfall and our earlier images. Thus, the image that I'm presenting to you has some compromises, but ultimately turned out to be exactly how I envisioned it. This was the best waterfall moment I got while sitting there and waiting as the tide came in and out. A little side note is check out what this looked like a few days later when the tide was much lower and it really gives you an idea of how much the coastline can change when you're shooting compositions. One decision was how to balance the entire frame. Do I want to include the sun? Where do I want the mountains? How low do I hold my camera without compromising stability? I tried a few frames. In the earlier images, I aligned the waterfall and mountains almost on top of each other because the sun was just a bright spot almost out of frame whereas the later images, the sun was creating a more defined sun star. Thus, I tried including it as an element in my image. I think trying to include the sun weakened the rest of the image overall, and I actually got lucky that the best waterfall moment happened to be when I wasn't trying to include the sun. In the case of my final image, the sun is just a completely blown out spot in the photo that I can't recover. While this isn't ideal, we can work in our edit to turn it into something that almost looks intentional, or we could even get a little free with our edit and potentially fix another compositional restriction that we had out in the field. Remember how tight the composition was in shooting and how I would have liked a little bit more on both the top and bottom of my frame? All right, landscape photography purists or people that don't like altering images, you can either close out of the video now or close your eyes or at the very least, don't leave any mean comments down below. I'm giving you a warning now. What if we used Photoshop's new generative fill 
to give us a little bit more on the top and the bottom of the frame. So I thought I would try this out and see what the results were like for fun. I even used the method of creating the area with a thousand pixel marquee to get true mass resolution so I wasn't blowing out too much resolution using just one insert. However, it's still not perfect. Notice all the editing lines you can see here, and it could use a little bit more refining. This won't be my final image, but something I will likely use is this fix for the blown out highlights in my sky that I think it did a really great job for, and I don't think this is too much of an alteration that I can probably get away with it. Anyways, I would love your feedback on this video format. It actually takes me a lot more time to create this and narrate it and put a story together, but I feel like it allows me to deliver a more cohesive and fleshed out thought behind these deeper topics in photography. So if you liked it, let me know. I'd love to know down below. And as always, you can like this video if you liked it. Consider subscribing if you loved it. There's gotta be some rainbows out there somewhere. Just not here, because I haven't seen the sun since the day you watched this video. See you on the next one. Later. All right, we're done. We're done. That's it. That's a wrap. How long is it? 22 minutes? Not bad.